Welcome to my home. I'm, uh, I just did an event with Moms Toronto, Moms TO, and I was a joint rolling expert that came in and did my joint rolling 101, so I thought I would share it uh, to the public as well on Facebook. So since it's all set up, um, that's just a little bit of a leftover from before, but uh, I'm gonna take my buds. And the first thing I do is I'm breaking them down a little bit smaller to make sure any of the larger chunks of stem get removed. Because the last thing you want is to spend your time rolling a nice, beautiful, perfect J and then having stem poke through and wreck the airflow. So I make sure to get all, I like to make sure to get all the cannabis off my stem. Some people will leave like little crystals on the stem and I like to make sure I'm getting as much as I can. So, but yeah, removing all the little pieces of stem and then just checking to make sure you don't have anything sharp that'll poke through your paper. And then from there, I take my trusty grinder. I have a maintainer here, but I have this maintainer, which is great because it's a stash odor stash airtight container and uh, it's got a built-in grinder so you just drop it in I try to try to keep my tray clean as I go but I usually have to clean up at the end so got this nicely busted up bud Another trick I like to do while grinding is I love telling people that when you're grinding, you want to put your bud in the smaller side of the grinder. So there's two sides and this side is the bigger side. It's wider. This is the inner circle. And when you put your bud on that inner circle, it does prevent it from caking up along the outer wall and getting sticky. So I always tell people to put your bud in the smaller side of the grinder. It's a great tip. And like from working in the vapor lounge and having to clean grinders all the time, it makes a big difference. I, I, I never have to clean my grinder when I put it on that side of it. So when you put it on the smaller side circle, it uh, definitely won't cake up around the outer walls of the grinder. So I've got a nice pile to start with there. And I rolled a bunch of joints in uh, my last session, but I'll start from the beginning with a hand roll. There's a little seed in there. I don't know where it, which bud it came from. So I've got a nice pile. And I'll take my smoking brown papers. And the fold, on the, when it's folded down, that's the glue side. So the glue is on the inside of the fold. And I generally will make another fold right below that fold to make kind of like a boat to put the weed in. So there's a, I folded it at the edge to make a, a nice tray to put it in. So I'll just sprinkle my cannabis and then I leave a little bit of space at the end on both sides some people will put their their filter in while they're rolling but I like to do it afterwards it's all personal preference so I'll leave a little bit of space at the end and then I pinch it with my thumb and I'm just pinching and rolling it back and forth so between my index fingers and my thumb I'm pinching and just back and forth back and forth and you feel the cannabis rolling into a snake-like joint shape. And then I'm gonna keep pulling my thumb down until the edge of the, edge of the paper is right up against the cannabis. You then you fold it in and roll back. And I keep my joint straight, so I make sure it's flush on both ends. And then with just that, that little bit of strip of glue, I lick it lightly and fold it 
And with these like organic papers, the glue is, is very uh, non-toxic. It's like sugar-based glue. So you don't need to lick it very much. Some people will even lick it from the back side because to prevent it from, uh, if you lick it too much, the glue will come right off. And then the other thing with them is I don't, uh, I don't manipulate the joint with, by putting a filter in right away. I'll give it about 30 seconds to a minute before I put my filter in because if, if I started playing around with it, the glue would pull apart. So for anyone who's had trouble with certain brands of paper and the glue not sticking, you just want to be careful not to lick the glue right off. So it only needs a light lick and then you don't want to touch the joint while it's drying. You got to give it a little bit of time. And uh, while, I'm do while that's drying, before I put the filter in, I'll show you the other method, which is a rolling machine. Normally I would roll like three joints in a row and then put the filters in after to give them all time to dry. But with this rolling machine, if anyone, this half is the moving side, so you want to put it in the lower setting so you can feel the joint is where, it, that's where it's going to go. And you just sprinkle the cannabis in, it's pretty easy, sprinkle it in. And then I've got my filters. The size of the joints I roll, I like to put two filters in because I think one, one filter is a little uh, thin. And I fold it over. And I make sure that the longer side is the outer part of the joint so that I don't have two ends when I roll it up. So spinning that. This filter is just going to slip in beside where I put all the weed. So I've got my joint all lined up in there. I can clean it up a little with my tool. So once I've got the joint all in there, I'll take the, so the side of the, the machine that moves and switch it into the top position while keeping all the cannabis in there. A couple pieces fall out, but your cannabis is in there and it's in the upper position and I'm just gonna spin the roller towards me. So while it's spinning towards me, it's uh, making the perfect shape joint. So you can see on this side, that's the filter side. And on this side, you can see the end of the joint, the cannabis spun. And yeah, you spin it a good amount so that it's got a nice shape. Then I'm gonna grab my paper with the glue facing me and just feed it in. So you put the end, the edge of the paper that's not, uh, that's got not got glue on it, and you just keep spinning, oh, spinning the wheel towards yourself. And it's rolling the joint for you inside the machine. And with just the little bit of paper at the end, that's the glue facing towards me. I'm gonna lick it lightly and then keep spinning and it, it just glued the joint for me inside there. Spinning it up nicely. And like I said, you wanna let it dry a little, but once I open this up, got my spun machine roll joint with filter in. There we go. So a lot of people love these. Who Anyone who struggles with getting a, a standard joint, these will roll it for you every time. And now back to my dried hand roll joint. I'm gonna put the filter in. Like I said, I fold my filter and have the longer side on the outer part so that it, because if I were to roll it backwards, I'd have two edges and I don't want that. So, I've got my filter. And my joints are pretty even on both sides, but if ever one side's slightly smaller, I'll generally put the filter in that side. People who do cone joints, the smaller side is where they put the filter. And then once I push it in, it ex the filter expands out to the size of the paper. And something I like to do is I'll, from the center of the joint, I'll, sk I'll spin it outwards so that it's tight against the paper. 
So I just spun it so that the filter is really tight around the outer of the paper. And then I'll twist it back in a bit just to keep the, the hole smaller. But in this way, the, the filter won't pull out when you're smoking it. You know how when you're passing a joint and someone ends up with the filter in their mouth, that technique prevents that. And so I've got my joint and a pokey tool. So with my pokey tool, I'm just going to press in here because one of the things you want to be sure of is that it's well packed, that there aren't any air gaps in the joint because uh, it won't smoke well if it's not nicely packed. And then you also don't want it too tight because if it's too tight no, and no air can go through, then it won't pull well either. I like to massage the joint lightly a little bit just so that there aren't any big chunks and that it's, it's got a good even spread. And I pinch, shake it like a Polaroid, and I pinch the other way. And one of my things that I like to do is I'll make a crease at the end, fold, I'll pinch it there so that there's a nice fold. And I like to do that because with my lighter, I'll burn the edge. I'm not lighting the joint right now, I'm just burning that fold. I think this was Wong Bong who taught me how to do this, right Chris? I think this was Wong Bong's technique. But I burned the edge and uh, the paper came right off. And now I'm left with a nice joint to spark. You can see the beautiful green grass. And uh, no paper, when I, spark, when I spark the end of it, my first hit will be nice. So that's my hand, my hand rolled and my uh, rolling machine. They look comparable. So if those two methods aren't for you, the next technique you can try is a cone. So I this bought cool. I bought these at work today, and uh, it's two bucks for a pack of uh, six of these at the Friendly Stranger. And we also that rolling machine is like six dollars to buy. So. If you are curious, the Friendly Stranger sells these and we're offering curbside pickup in Burlington and London and coming soon to Toronto. You can also get free delivery if you spend more than uh, 50 bucks. I just need some more bud to demonstrate. My husband Chris will be happy that I've rolled all these joints for us. I love it. <laughs> He's, he does a lot of the rolling for us, but... He has taught me well. So, reminder, the small side of the grinder is where you want to put your bud. I generally go back and forth, and then I sometimes will go around once, just to get a good grind. If it's really dry, it doesn't need that much of a grind, and if it's stickier or wetter, you gotta grind it a little bit more. But you gotta be careful, you don't wanna grind it too fine. So I've got my cone, it's really easy. You just pack the bud in. And these, yeah, it's $6 for, uh, I mean, $2 for six cones. So for someone who's, who's smoking joints every day all the time, it's not the most value but they are very handy. If you had, like when we used to do our 420 celebrations where we give out tons of joints, there's no way we could have hand rolled them all. We definitely used these cones and there's, you can even get a machine where you can pack like 20 at a time. And this little tube came with, with the cones, so as a pet pokey. So yeah, comes out perfect every time a cone. Um, you do, like I said, want to make sure you're pressing it down so there aren't too many air gaps in there. I can fill it up even more. And then having the tools like this, this is a laminated leaf that I grew with Chris. We laminated it. 
but you can just use a business card or any kind of card to keep your tray clean. And you don't need a fancy, friendly stranger wood tray like mine. You could always just use. There's lots of metal trays out there that are really cool and handy. Um, I used to use like DVD cases, a book, any kind of hard surface to contain. Poke it down. Nice joint. So this was the cone. And look, there's a little tiny stem like poking through there, but it's so close to the end that it won't really bother my joint. If the stem were poking down here, it would suck. And like, I would probably patch it. If it were really bad, I would just tear it off and open it up again. But like, if I had to patch a joint, I would just tear like the tiniest bit of glue off and patch it up. So we have hand rolled, rolling machine rolled, cone rolled. Those are all your options. And then the other thing, if, if you're not into any of those, you could always buy um, a pre-roll at the store. So this is a Soleil pre-roll. It was, I think, seven bucks for this half gram, but it's a nice roll and it smokes well. And I'm sure this looks like a cone that they filled with a machine. But this was a pre-roll I bought today at the store. Beautiful, huh? Well, I just wanted to share with you all my techniques. So yeah, the reminder, when you pinch the end of the joint, burn off that paper so you don't smoke it at the first hit is nice to actually taste the herb and not paper right perfect and then yeah reminder small side of the grinder is the best place to put your bud this has been fun and thanks for tuning in I'm gonna smoke these now Starting Mother's Day early. And I think I'm smoking a mix of stuff. I've got a bunch of Renew in here. Um, what else have I gotten lately? I have some daily specials, sativa. My uncle sent me some homegrown from Denman Island, if you guys want to see it. My uncle sent me some bud that he grew himself, or maybe it was one of his friends grew it, but BC bud from Denman Island from my uncle. Organic. Organic. Can't, can't, the picture's not, uh, when you go too close, it doesn't focus very well. But yeah, I like to make a salad. Often I mix different strains, and then I like getting the effect from multiple. They blend well. Is anyone interested in seeing the live rosin I bought today? Well, I am. So I bought this live rosin. First time you can buy dabs, legal dabs. It's mm -hmm. kind of cool. I've seen a picture of it, but I haven't seen it in person. I'm going to dab this tonight. BC live rosin. Can I see how many people are watching or a chat or anything? No, it's in I... the top right corner or left corner. It's up there. Cool. And then you can see the chat if you want to. You see live rosin. Cool. It smoked perfectly, the joint I rolled. I wish I could share it with you all. So. Interesting, this is like the container and it's completely se sealed and there's like a slight perforation at the lid, like in the center where the lid is, I guess. So as soon as I spin it, this is gonna crack open, I think. Strange. Ah, there, see that? Cracked it. 
And what does it look like? I usually like to cut it. Neater? So it's a neat line. <laughs> Next time. It's wrapped in what? It's a parchment paper. Some kind of parchment. So this is a half gram and it was like 60 bucks. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be buying this very often, but I wanted to see what legal dabs look like. Ooh. Interesting, eh? Hmm. I don't want to lose any of it, but I'm going, I'm going to try this. It's got a nice smell. Looks nice too. It's from Canna Farms and like their stuff is it's normally expensive. It's very expensive, but good quality. So I'm looking forward to trying this out. Cool. I didn't picture the live rosin to look like that. I don't know why I thought it would be more like goopy. It's, it looked a bit goopy. It, it didn't look goopy to me. Can you like fold it and squish it? You can squish it a little. I don't want to play with it too much. But it's crumbly and it's like... It's more crumbly than goopy? Yeah, it's not... It's It doesn't look like it has much liquid moisture in it. Does it feel waxy? What does it feel like? Hmm. Huh. Kind of... Almost like a clay-like. Like it's got... It doesn't feel wet. I guess like a crumble. Huh. There's so many different terminologies for different types of concentrates. And so while I was get, with my new job, I was starting, I was like researching or doing prep work and the definition for concentrates and extracts came up. And when I was looking at the definitions in a resource I had, it was describing um, there, were, there is the difference between extracts, extracts and concentrates. Can anyone tell me what the difference is? Because I had to like read it a couple times to get a grasp on it. So everything is an extract, right? But concentrates are specifically like without um, without any kind of like Solvent. solvent. So concentrates, I guess, are a live rosin would be a concentrate and an extract, but any kind of BHO would only be an extract, wouldn't be a concentrate. But I don't think anyone in the industry follows those rules. I think people use concentrate and extract interchangeably, but I'm going to just double check that, that I didn't get it backwards. But yeah, concentrates, everything's an extract, but concentrates are solventless, apparently. I don't know if that's legitimate, but I think that's the difference. I'm going to double check. Can anyone verify that? Dead air. All right. Thanks for tuning in. So here, I look. Gloss. Look at what? I'm looking at my definitions. Concentrates. Cannabis concentrates. Show the, that, that what you're looking at, kind of, hmm. to the camera, just for a second. So I'm reading this little chart definitions. But cannabis concentrates are compounds which have been extracted from... Okay, so it's I was wrong. Extracts are the ones that are solventless. So a cannabis concentrate... So everything's a concentrate, but extracts are solventless. I got it backwards before. <laughs> extracts are solventless. So a cannabis concentrate made with the use of a solvent. Common solvents. Oh, no, I was right before. I was right before. In some way. Let's get this straight. It was confusing for me. So... 
All extracts are concentrates, but not all concentrates are extracts, and the extracts have to have a solvent. Does that make sense? So an ext like live rosin is not an extract, it's only a concentrate. Extracts have to have a solvent. They were extracted with a solvent, while all concentrate, like, you know what I mean? So a cannabis concentrate made with the use of a solvent, common solvents used include butane, propane, ethanol, and supercritical carbon dioxide. All extracts are concentrates, but not all concentrates are extracts. You learn something new every day. <laughs> it's so confusing, you always screwed it up. I screwed it up a little bit, but you get why it was, I'm sure almost everyone I'm talking to didn't know that. Right? <laughs> so, so where can we find you? I'm uh, like my Instagram or my find me where? I'm on Instagram at Erin Ashley Goodwin and I work at the Friendly Stranger. Right now I'm working in Burlington but they're opening up Toronto locations. We'll be reopening the Hotbox soon. Toronto's got three new locations coming to Church and Wellesley. Um, a new location right b beside their original location on Queen Street and then on the Danforth there's going to be another location so come see, say hi to us at the Friendly Stranger.